Hello, my name is Antonio Gutierrez, and I am from Duke University and the Durham VA Medical Center. I'd like to thank CVI for the opportunity to speak to you about large bore access. So successful vascular access is the cornerstone of a successful and safe procedure. This is uh, really true when especially using devices such as impellas, TAVRs, T-bars, and ECMO. These procedures all utilize femoral access. An important theme of this talk is the use of ultrasound. Um, that is because ultrasound guidance is still underutilized. Approximately 13% of providers actually use it on a regular basis, despite uh, approximately 90% of all cath labs having it readily available. If we're going to talk about uh, femoral axis, we need to talk about complications. The most common one being hematoma, 1-5%, to pseudoaneurysm, AV fistula, Retroperitoneal bleed, a very important one, as three quarters of these patients often need transfusion, and literature has also demonstrated that up to 10% of them die. There's also acute vessel closure, interval dissection that can be anterograde or retrograde. This is a great lead-in into the Faust trial, the femoral arterial axis with ultrasound trial. This was a trial of real-time ultrasound-guided femoral vascular access. Slightly over 1,000 patients were randomized to ultrasound versus fluoroscopic vascular access. The primary endpoint was successful common femoral artery access. Secondary endpoints were time to sheath insertion, number of four needle advancements, first pass success, accidental venal punctures, vascular access complications at 30 days. Here we have a few results. On the left, we have CFA cannulation success, and which you can see overall, they were very similar y-axis is percentages, the x is the situation, but where it really shined was in those with high bifurcation, you could see there's approximately 20 to 30 percent increase in successful CFA cannulation. On the right side, we have success by experience. As with anything in life, the more you do it, the better you will get at it. And really, you want to be using ultrasound at least 15 times. That's where the success rates really jump up to the high 80s, nearing 90 percent. As far as interprocedural outcomes, which you can see, ultrasound, number of attempts close to one versus fluoroscopy at three. Um, the other where it really shined was mean time to insertion. Contrary to popular belief, use of ultrasound was associated with a shorter time to insertion, both mean and median. Next, we have vascular complications. Ultrasound, 0.6% for hematoma, fluoroscopy, 2.2. Overall, any bleeding complication, 1.4% with ultrasound versus 3.4% with fluoroscopy. P-value was significant. So to summarize the Faust trial, there was no difference in overall CFA cannulation rates, except for certain situations, such as improvement in high bifurcation patients. It also reduced the number of attempts, time to access, risk of venipuncture, and vascular access complications. So let's move on to contemporary femoral axis techniques. I'd like to point out that a large number of figures and techniques were taken from a great resource, the Vascular Axis Management and Closure Best Practices from Sky. This is readily available and free at the Sky website. So to start off for femoral axis, it's important to remember that anatomic landmarks can be unreliable. Skin crease, anterior superior spine, and pubic symphysis are unreliable, especially in obese patients. Really, the best practice is to use both ultrasound and fluoroscopy, as, as is, it is the safest and most reliable. It will give you information on vessel diameter, calcification, and even tortuosity. Here we have the technique using both ultrasound and fluoroscopy. Panel A and B, you want to use your hemoclamps to use and locate the inferior border of the femoral head. Confirm it with uh, fluoroscopy. Combine it with ultrasound to find the common femoral artery and the location of the bifurcation of the SFA and profunda. Then go ahead and insert your needle at 45 degrees. You using ultrasound, you confirm your access and then use angiography to confirm your sheath location. The other nice thing about ultrasound is it actually can show you in real time your access here in panel A, you can see the vessel um, prior to uh, access, and F, you can actually see the needle going through the vessel 
highlighted here through this arrowhead. Another thing to consider, uh, I know this is commonly done in patients uh, planning for TAVR, but if you have a high risk case plan, you might want to consider CTA as it will give you a lot of information about calcification and vessel tortuosity. Remember to minimize vessel injury and ensure distal perfusion with sheath. Sheath to femoral arterial ratio should be less than 1.05. So now that we talked about access, let's talk about planning for closing large bore access. Common practice that we use at our institution is pre-closing with a per-close device. This starts again with ultrasound act guided access. You want to nick over the micropuncture needle and exchange for a four French micropuncture catheter. You then perform an, an, an angiogram with this micropuncture catheter to confirm you are in the correct spot. If you're happy with your location, you then place the 035 J-wire through the micropuncture catheter and go ahead and start inserting your per-close provide system over the J-wire. You would advance it at a 45 degree angle until pulse of top flow is seen and then you rotate it at 10 o'clock position, midline, then deploy. After deployment, you reinsert the 035 J wire into that per-close proglide, remove the device, and secure the sutures for hemostats. You would then repeat the second per-close proglide at the two o'clock position. This is what it looks like. Panel one, you see it at 10 o'clock. Panel two, you see it at two o'clock and then you use your hemostats to, to keep the suture strings in place. So in terms of closure techniques, we have the suture base, the per-close system, which we just demonstrated. Then there is manual compression. Remember, I was always taught manual compression, it's three minutes per French. So if you're using an eight French, that would be at least minimum 24 minutes. There's also assisted manual compression devices, such as the FemStop, it's important to make sure your staff that are caring for a patient are know how to use the device. And then there's also the dry suture technique. Lastly, we wanna talk about large bore axis bailout. The most common one is the crossover technique, contralateral common access. And then you would use an angled catheter such as an Omni or a contra to get access and then you can balloon tamponade. Another thing to readily have available is the coda balloon. These all give you time to contact your surgical colleagues. So lastly, planning is key to success. CTAs, planning, pre-closure device with the pre-close. You wanna use ultrasound and fluoroscopy and make sure in the back of your mind you always have strategies for bailout. Thank you, have a nice day.